Hello and thank you so much for joining me. My name is Sasha Reed. If you've not joined me before, this is a new series I started called When You Only Have, an hour, have half an Hour. Um, this is the sixth video in this series, so I will link the playlist down below where you can check out all the other ones or I'll link it at the end of the video. Um, but this is a great way to use up those small bits of time. I felt like there was a really big need for this. I had a lot of people saying these are great videos, can we have more? So I'm carrying on with these videos for you. Getting started, I have just cut up a piece of watercolour card and I've cut it into a little panel to go on the front of my standard sized UK size card. I've got a vanilla card stock here that I'm using as my base, but I'm using watercolour card as my actual front that I'm going to decorate. I'm going to use my new stamps from Pretty Gets Gritty. I'll link everything I can down below. I'll link my little mixed media mat as well. It's such a good way to um, ink blend because it kind of sticks your cardstock to your um, to the mat for you and you don't have to worry about it wiggling around when you're ink blending which is super fab and then it just rolls up and tucks on your de in your desk or on your shelf or wherever you want to put it. So I am going ahead and stamping with Versafine Onyx Black pigment ink and I am just stamping my images onto my card panel. So I started with the butterflies and I realized I actually wanted a sentiment to be in the middle there. So I went ahead and stamped the sentiment, used my stamp platform just in case something went wrong that I could redo those words um, or re-ink them and stick it down again. And the rest, I'm just stamping once with my stamp block and my ink pad. Now, you need to make sure to heat set this or let it dry because it is a pigment ink, so it will start to smear if it's not fully dry. And the reason I'm using a pigment ink is just because this is my favorite black ink. That's the only reason why I love it. And it also is not water reactive, and we're going to be using water. So that is one of the big pluses to that ink pad. I'm using Tim Holtz's Distress inks today. I've got Picked Raspberry and Squeezed Lemonade. Now obviously it's a pink and a yellow, so in the middle it will kind of make an orange when you kind of blend them together. I'm going very heavy handed with my ink. I want a nice, saturated, solid, solid, vibrant color. And you'll see why in a minute when we start the next technique, when we start the technique I should say. Um, this technique, I have no idea what the name is, but I'm going to call it Color Lift because that's what it seems like it is. It's probably the name for it, but I'm not sure. I've never done it before and I really wanted to have a go. I saw something in a magazine that just inspired me and I thought, ooh, I want to try that technique. So again, I'm applying that yellow starting from the end and going towards the middle so you get this nice orange in the middle. And it is very, very heavily applied ink. Now, if you've got a paintbrush, use that. If you've got a watercolor brush, you can use that. We just want to apply water onto our card now. This is why we're also using watercolor card. It can withstand the um, rubbing that I'm going to do with my paintbrush. I'm just going over my image, um, the center of my image, and lifting that ink back off. So I'm applying the water and then lifting it not long after. Now the watercolor card does kind of absorb that water quite quickly because it's built and designed to be able to withstand the water and work with the water. So I'm trying to dab it as quick as I can and I'm using quite a lot of water but trying to stay within those lines. It doesn't really look like much now when I'm doing it but quite a bit of color is coming off. My paper towel is getting a bit colored. Um, but what you'll see is when I go and I dry the card that's when you notice the difference because as I'm applying the water, the cardstock's getting wet and we all know when things get wet, they look darker. So wait till you see the heat tool come in and you'll see the magic really, really happen. Because at first I was like, this just isn't working. What is going on? What am I doing wrong? And I thought, I'll just carry on. I'll carry on. It's, it's lightening up enough that I'm liking it. Uh, but when I use that heat tool, I was really, really excited because it looks amazing. So again, if you've got a paintbrush, just use that. I'm coming in again with my ink blending brushes just to kind of apply some more ink to where that ink had come off. Now watch this magic happen. Are you watching the butterflies? You'll start to see them really lighten up now. It is quite cool. There we go. See that pink one? It just kind of pops off the page all of a sudden and the yellow one does it as well. Really, really fun technique. And again, this only took half an hour to do. It was really good fun and it was quite therapeutic because I really enjoyed the ink blending. I'll link down those blending brushes for you down below, but you can get them absolutely everywhere. Now here you can see, because I was heat setting it and drying it, 
when I flipped my cardstock over to dry it from the back, I didn't really pay attention to the fact there was moisture now on my mat from the heat coming through the cardstock. So I ended up with little water droplets because Tim Holtz's Distress Ink is water reactive, so it does kind of give you those kind of water droplet effects if you get the water on it. So I'm applying some more ink and it does look a bit of a hot mess, but when it dries, you'll see the photos at the very end, when it dries, it looks totally normal again. It just sets back right in. Um, again, because it's wet when I've just applied it, it looks darker, but when it dries, it matches and blends perfectly. So I've gone ahead and cut myself a black panel that is just a tiny bit bigger than that front panel. I really wanted that black to kind of, you know, continue through my card. And so this just enables it to kind of pop a bit more as well. So I'm going to go ahead and stick that onto my card base now. And with using liquid glue, it gives me the wiggle room I need to kind of get it centered because they're quite skinny edges. Now, if you've got diamantes and you want them colored and you want them to match your project, this is the trick. Um, you get out your alcohol markers. So if you've got a Sharpie, your black Sharpies, you've got one of those multicolored Sharpie set, um, cheapo, pound shop, dollar store, colored alcohol markers, you can go ahead and color your diamonds. It works super easy. It's really quick and really simple. And it takes almost no time to dry because they're obviously alcohol pens. Um, I'm using the Arteza ones. They come in a set of black and blue. And I absolutely love them. They're really good quality and they're much cheaper than Sharpies. I'll link them down below for you. But all I've done is colored these little gems in black and, and now I'm sticking them onto my card and I get this beautiful shine and bit of bling in no time at all and I didn't have to have five million different colors of gems. So it's a really great tip and trick there for you. If you've got any kind of permanent markers, it works really well. But that finishes off my card. So here you can see the dried version and it's looking a lot more normal now. Um, this was such a fun card. I'm definitely gonna be doing this technique a lot more in the future. I had a really good time with it. I hope you had fun as well. Please do make sure you like and subscribe and keep your eyes on my channel for another half an hour video next week. I'll see you all on Saturday for some Saturday night crafting. Bye for now.